What do you get when you mix robotic automation, Swiss type CNC machining, and a family run shop that embraces struggle like a core value? The reason I started the business is so I had something to leave to my kids. By the time we needed the, the fancy machinery, I, I put my house up once for collateral just to buy it. Inside this building is one of the most forward-looking shops we've seen, and it's no surprise they were a 2025 Modern Machine Shop Top Shops honoree. When we bought that first Swiss CNC machine from Mark, it was a high production job. His house is up for collateral. We get the machine in, we get the material in. I think maybe we run the first release, and that business went under. From lights out machining and low frequency vibration cutting to digital systems that track everything from quotes to quality, Midway Swiss Turn is proving that small doesn't have to mean simple. We visited Worcester, Ohio to see how this team runs complex parts, lean workflows, and a culture that's as fun as it is fearless. Let's check it out. Talk about, talk about starting, starting the business and, and the kind of equipment that you had. Okay, when I started, I just had the bridge port and I had the engine lathe and the surface grinder. I was doing tool and die work. Was it a garage? It was a large, I had 20 feet wide and 60 feet long. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see for the, the layout of the shop, we have um, our main machines with our Swiss screw machines here. We run all citizens. When we first moved into the shop, we had two machines, and we're up to seven of them now. We try to set up each machine with its own workstation or workbench that has anything that the operator might need for that job. Um, we are, as we're growing, we've added two new types of technology. Uh, we have a five axis mill, a UMC, and we do have room to put another one over there to create a little cell. And then same thing, this one just got put on the floor, started production this week. Um, and we have, yeah, the, the Miano, yeah. So it's a uh, twin spindle, twin turret, 51 millimeter CNC machine. Um, and we have already space right here for the next one, which is uh, planned probably for the next couple of years, I would say. It was a, a building that my brother owned and he let me have it half, but he wanted to sell his house. And so I had to get out of there and I found this place. And I talk, and I talk people in the back. I was just gonna say, are you gonna? I was, uh, I was, I was honestly against buying this place at first um, because it was so big and so much. I'm like, we we don't need anywhere near that space. It seemed like such a huge commitment. Entrepreneurs, business starters, that's that's what they do for a living. They take these risks. So let me let me ask, what types of parts are you typically producing on your Swiss types? Um, well, there is no typical part. We run anything that will fit on that machine. So we have up to 32 millimeter capabilities and we run for oil and gas, DOD, aerospace, fasteners, um, into the hunting and um, firearms industries. Uh, about the only industry we steer clear of intentionally is automotive because we don't want to turn into a captive shop. So more than the industry of parts, what we try to do is have good balance in our in our customer base uh, so that we don't become too heavily reliant on any one industry. Uh, all industries go through cycles. When one's down, presumably another one will be up. Now even within our Swiss machines, right now we have seven different models on the floor, seven different configurations. Same thing when you buy a car, you know, you can, you can buy an F-150, but there's different trim levels and all that. They all do different things. I wasn't sure if you guys were getting into or, or could talk about low frequency vibration for, for finishes and ship control? Very early adopters and yeah, that was, we get better finishes, better tolerances. Low frequency vibration in itself is, lends a very good hand to chip control like, like Jamie had said, but it's like if you think of 316, some titanium. I was just going to ask about that. Yeah. Um, that you can't, like when you're trying to get a really good finish on something like 32 RA and under, LFV isn't always the greatest, but when you're taking those giant hog cuts, that's where it'll help because a lot of times your strings will ball up. LFV will minimize that completely. You had the bridge port. Were you working for somebody else? And my, ultimately my question is, what motivated you to start Midway rather than work for somebody else? I uh, just, the reason I started the business is so I had something to leave to my kids. 
That's, that's the reason I did it. And then by the time we needed the, the fancy machinery, I, I put my house up for collateral just to buy it. Wow, for your, for your first yeah. barb. Yeah, and the second machine too. Yeah. And then, then we ran into some tough times and uh, Jamie figured out a way to pull us through that one. <laughs> really, are we talking about 2008? Like the Great Recession area? Um, yeah. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. By and large, we have generally two machinists out here to run all nine machines. Really? Yeah. Two? Two. That's a majority of the day, there's two. If there's troubleshooting to do with one of them or there's something exceptional, we might have a third, with a third one of the owners would come out and do some troubleshooting. I'd say 12 to 14 hours a day is what we try to target, and that's on our, on our lathes. Our mill will run 24-7 because of the robot. Yeah, if we fill up that table on certain jobs, it can run 36 hours. My first question about this is pretty general. It's just what made the 5-axis uh, with robotic automation a priority investment for you guys? So that goes back actually a long way. We've done Swiss work for 25 years now. Um, one thing our customers have consistently asked us to do is mill work. and because we were generally only had two people here doing the, the machining, mills never were going to work for us because they, they really needed a lot of labor. You needed somebody to stand there, hand load parts in, take them out. We just were not set up to need, you know, have that amount of labor. So we were very resistant to it. Um, as automation and robotics came out, and, and really once the price started to come, to come down and make it accessible even to small companies, that's when we really started thinking about doing some precision mill work again. For me and for our company, the thing that had to be part of it was the robotic arm because I couldn't hire a whole nother machinist just to stand here and flip a part. And, and your robot here, um, this looks like a, is this a five axis Fanuc? Yeah. Fanuc. Yeah, so we actually purchased this machine fully integrated. So. And it came with learning curves like any new machine will, but with the five axis mill and the robot, we're able to condense all that into the robot, put the part in, it may do a flip, it may do a secondary operation all within the same work holding, which we design ourselves, and then it'll bring out a part at the end. When we bought that first Swiss CNC machine from Mark, um, it was a high production job. It was kind of one of the biggest things we'd ever really looked at quoting. It needed this specialized equipment. Um, it was incredibly expensive at the time, you know, especially with where we were at. And uh, Mark's like, no, this is going to be great. This, this is going to be good. You know, his house is up for collateral. We get the machine in. We get the material in. I think maybe we run the first release. And that business went under that we were making the parts for. The work went away. So now we're left with um, a giant machine payment, this brand new piece of equipment and no work for it because we had intended for that to run full time on that one job. Um, oh yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's heart stopping. Um, this is where we go back to having those relationships with, with everybody that we work with. Uh, Mark Klecka at Concentric, he pulled through for us because we didn't even know how to market it at that point. That was never our goal. It was just to run this one job. So um, I hit the road with with you doing sales and Mark Klecka from Concentric was steadily feeding us. These are uh, customers that he would go see that needed Swiss machines but didn't have enough work to warrant buying one. So he could facilitate the relationship for us and he kept that work flowing in for us until we could get our feet under us and, and do the sales. And so I, I had to learn how machines operated really fast. For us to have low labor on the floor, it's important that the office side supports that as much as possible. So that would be us doing the work up front to make sure that by the time it hits the floor, it's all been thought out. Um, basic setup, regardless of the job, is going to be uh, loading a program into the machine, and that will have been developed and written by our office side. It's going to be setting up our automatic bar feeders with the right channels and everything for the size of material stock that we're gonna put in there. Um, all of our material comes in, is received in, and is labeled and barcoded uh, and set in our material storage in the back there. So it has the job number, the part number, everything on it so that there's no question about what matches what job. Uh, we are 
all of our jobs have a job traveler um, that, that goes with it that also says this is the material that you should be looking for, this is how many pieces there should be. So they can collect all of that stuff. And, and what are you using, what is the platform you're using to convey all the information that's created in, in the... Sure, yeah. So we have a couple different platforms. We use an ERP system that houses all of that information, and that is Jawboss Squared. It's their cloud-based version. Uh, also in the office, there's specialized programming software developed by Citizen, and so we use that mostly to program all of our Swiss machines, but we also use Hexagon's Esprit, and we will have the ability to use some Mastercam as well. From a quoting standpoint, we use paperless parts, and ECI um, is, has, has an estimating salt, um, a module in it, but what we found with paperless parts is it gives us the ability to not be as rigid. It gives us the ability to communicate back and forth with each other on different thought processes because I mean, inevitably, we're quoting, I don't know, on average 15, 20 different quotes a, a week. Um, it can go up and down from there, but it's really hard going back and thinking through your thought process on something that happened three months ago. So a lot of the automation that helps out on the shop floor actually helps in the office, too, with, you know, with everything, and then it flows out here. Uh, the last piece of kind of software that we have that we use is this device here you'll see on top of our machines and that's called Harmony. So this is really gonna be a lot of machine monitoring, uh, data collection, and in addition to that, it's going to house and collect all of our quality checks and data as well. Let's, let's talk a little bit about what, what Harmony is, is doing for even one specific job that you're running here. So, I mean, a lot of it is, how is the machine running? You know, what, what's the downtime look at? Um, what's the spindle time like? How long does it sit? Um, and just practical stuff like how many parts has it run? Um, and it allows me to have that in my office at my desk. This tells you not only how the machine is running, it gives you like job specific data that tracks back to our job routing through ECI, so it's all integrated together. But it also gives you program rev tracking. So those tweaks that you're making as you're dialing the job in, um, it will capture that, you send it off to Harmony, and it revs it. So you can go back and say, all right, the job ran great two months ago, what did we change? It also has a feature, it has a camera and a microphone here. You can actually get on Harmony's dashboard and actually talk to people through. So each time we would, we would have one of those things happen, whether it's a, a full industry recession or just the individual industries as they go through it, it would teach us a lot about how to how to organize our work, the types of customers to go after. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, Modern Machine Shop and our, our, we have a program called Top Shops. We have hundreds of shops across the country that take this survey. And then um, when the survey closes, uh, I and, and some of my colleagues go through all the data and it's a lot of data and we select the four top shops in the entire country for those categories and you guys are one of them. Um, and uh, interestingly, uh, two of the shops this year are, are um, run by females, and I think that's fantastic. And uh, is there anything to say about, about leading a shop? Um, I mean, traditionally, this industry is very male-dominated. It is, yeah. I mean, and again, I've even before here, I worked in manufacturing. I guess I'm just used to it. Um, my belief on that in general is simply, you know, I have a job to do and I, and I do it. I don't really consider whether I'm male or female or who I'm working with. Was that something that you had considered or did that change your opinions on anything or? No, I was, I was happy that she did come in because I don't like to do the paperwork. I'm, <laughs> I'm a machinist. <laughs> Hey everybody, Brent Donaldson with Modern Machine Shop here, and if you just watched that video and you're thinking, boy, I'd like my shop to be featured in the View for My Shop series, then just send us an email at shopvideo at mmsonline.com and tell us what sets your shop apart.